took time, you know, it's always getting prepared for the presentation, always taking time. Am I disturbing? Yeah, I think so. Um, my name is Hide Izaki from Japan. I'm the uh, first Asian World Virtual Champion 2014. It took me three years, completely expired, but you know, I'm happy with it. And uh, by the way, I'm the 18 years old, I'm still single in the Philippines, so if you, <laughs> if you wanna stay together, just let me know, okay? Cool, uh, awesome. So, uh, st first off, and thank you very much everyone for, for everyone to come down here. And I'm so glad to be you know, part of this event, and thank you very much. And of course, and big thank you for Mr. Leo and Alego staff, thank you very much. And of course, my bello, uh, Nova Shimonelli, Federico, my partner, thank you very much. He's very sexy, yeah? <laughs> He's one of the most sexiest Italian I never met. <laughs> and also, guys, also the uh, other sponsors as well, thank you for supporting this event. And the, uh, of course, and the Coffee Project, thank you very much for providing this venue. So I think we do not really have a time to do much presentation, so I'm going to go quick. But you know, Nova Shimonelli is very generous because I'm not going to talk about product. And I'm going to talk about the, my experiences. Uh, that's because in you know, Nova Shimonelli, Victor Arduino, we think it's really important uh, for all of us to consider uh, to share the you know, value of the coffee, understanding and everything. So this is something that we want to do. There we go. Cool. So, coffee. Uh, cool. This is a miso soup, yeah? You like miso soup? Yes. Yeah? Good. Uh, I feel like I'm in a home. But you know, for Japanese, you know, oh, um, I travel, as I said, I travel 200 days by year. I travel a lot. A lot. My wife is very happy. <laughs> Super traveling a lot. You know, like, you know, last Saturday I came back. And in the Monday morning I left. Just one day staying in Japan coming back from Budapest, world of, or world of coffee, all good, coming back, and then now here in uh, Philippines right now. But you know, whenever you know, I travel a lot, and I, I always you know, I want to drink the miso soup, you know, this is something that makes me feel amazing, you know? Like, makes me feel very comfortable, feeling good, you know, feeling in the home. Yeah, like, but uh, miso soup is just for, I think, only for Japanese people, you know, not for everyone. But for coffee, it is not. Yeah? Coffee makes you feel comfortable, yeah? Coffee makes you feel amazing. And I think this is the power of coffee. Because in the coffee is being consumed like 2 billion cups per year. Yeah? 2 billion cups. It's pretty crazy. And uh, it's so many, you know, and this is like a second, uh, tra second, second biggest trade of product in the world, right after the oils. Yeah. So it means that and the coffee is everywhere in the world. Yes. It's crazy. And I travel 200 days per year because of a cup of coffee. So for me, you know, coffee is all about the uniting people from everywhere. Uh, so it gives you so many diversity and power, passions and the uh, dreams to the people's life. So I think this is why I'm completely obsessed with coffee. Because if I'm not working as a barista, I wouldn't be here. And coffee brings me down, down to here. So which makes me feel always very humble. And uh, I'm so appreciated to be part of this amazing community. And the, uh, one of the most amazing part of coffee is all about, you know, the, uh, we can connect, coffee can connect people together. So it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what kind of culture you are in, what kind of language you speak, what kind of culture, you know, skin color, whatever. It doesn't really, you know, coffee unites, unites people all together. So I think this is why I obsess with coffee. So I want to you know. I want to introduce my, you know, the experiences. You know, when I start, you know, like all the way up to become world of Russia champion. Oops. Yeah. This is me. 
Yeah, like a pretty boy, you know, when I was 16 years old. Um, this is, yeah, like 16 years old and I started working as a barista. Uh, it's simply because and I quit high school. Yeah? It's not something usual in the Japanese society because in Japanese society, what's happened? Excuse me. Uh, here we go. And in Japanese society, uh, you need to graduate university. Yeah, at least. Otherwise, you cannot get nearly, you cannot get the proper work over there. So, which is pretty difficult. But I quit high school because I hate everything. I hated everything. People, teacher, study, everything, literally. And, um, you know, I was very, you know, like a kind of naive boy. You know, we do, I didn't really know, you know, if you really couldn't, if you really, you know, if you didn't graduate, you know, like university, you cannot really get the proper job. But, you know, like junior high boy, junior high school boy always dreams a lot, yeah? So you, it, makes you, it makes you feel like you can do anything by yourself. But at the time, and I couldn't really do anything. And uh, of course, and if you go to get some work, and of course, and then, you know, first of all, you, you, got, you got told is, boy, go back to high school, go to university, and then come back. Yeah, like reality is pretty strict for me. Uh, but luckily, you know, my father has been landing specialty coffee roasters for 25 years. So in the coffee for me is family business, long, long time. And like uh, my father, at the time, you know, my father was saying to me, oh, he there, uh, what, would you, what would you like to be in the future? What do you want to do? And I'm saying, Dad, I have no idea what I want to do. And then my dad was saying, oh, Hida, if you want to work in, if you want to work in the coffee shop, fine, you can work. You know, there's no option for me, unfortunately. You know, I needed to, I needed to work in the coffee industry. I needed to work in the coffee shops, and then happened to be a barista. You know, at the time, and when I was 16 years old, it's like um, there's no one a barista yet. It's not really common. It's not really familiar in the Japanese market. You know, when I say, oh, Hide, what do you do? And I say, barista. And then everyone said, batista or barista. It's completely different, you know, work, you know. Uh, but, you know, and then, you know, when I started working as a barista, and I fall in love, because coffee is amazing. You know, coffee brings me to everywhere, and then I meet so many wonderful people, and I'm getting falling in love with the coffee. And then, you know, when I was 17, and I decided to compete in the Japan Barista Championship. And I compete in the Japan Barista Championship, and I happened to be uh, 24th out of 160 people. And since then, I came to finalists every year. And when I was 24, 23, and I became Japan Barista Champion. And then I compete uh, in the World, uh, World Barista Championship 2013. Melbourne. So this is the hardest experience that I ever had. I think slide, yeah? You came to 14th? Yes. How many point differences between the semifinals? Four, 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 points. four points, yeah? It's very tough, isn't it? Just four points? But four points is like nothing, you know, just for your information. Because, so we do, so we do the technical evaluation as well, but there's a fingerprint, this is 0 0.5 to 1 point, maybe, yeah? If you go a full fingerprint, see you bye-bye, World Brasher Championship. It's pretty hard, isn't it? But this is a reality, and, uh, you know, what's really bad about, you know, my experiences at the 2017 was I was tied with number 12, yeah? Because above number 12, you can go to semi-final. And for me, you know, I tied with number 12. Same point, literally. Yeah? But I lose because my special score was lower than number 12. Just 0.5 differences. 0.5 differences, and I lost. You know, I almost killed myself because, you know, I've been pouring so many passions, yeah? Like, you dedicate so many hours, yeah? You practice crazy. Absolutely. 
Yeah, you drink coffee so much and you go toilet stuck in the toilet like 12 hours and like vomiting espresso and stuff like that. Excuse me. Uh, but, you know, you, you sacrifice entire hour, entire time, but you couldn't really get out of it. You couldn't really get any good result. And I tried to kill myself, you know. It's pretty hard. Uh, but at the same time, I'm a very optimistic person. So when I was in a park, I still remember. I went to a strip club, excuse me, yeah? Uh, after I lose in the World Russia Championship, I went to a strip club. I wanted, I, want, I wanted to go. And I went to a strip club and I feel very miserable by myself. And I go to the park, yeah, in Australia. And in Australia, there is a possum. Do you know, have, you, have you ever heard a possum, yeah? Like kind of cat, but it's very Australian native cat, kind of. And uh, I was in the park in the midnight, like 3 a.m., and I feel very miserable. And yeah, I was uh, sitting on the sitting on the floor, and then um, you know, some several possums is coming up to me. And I was talking to possum. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. You know, I can't really go back to Japan without having anything back. And like, I don't know what I need to do. I don't know what I want to do. And uh, when I started talking to possum, and uh, my feel was, you know getting better. I don't know why. And I feel like you know I can do one more time. So in Australia I often talk about these stories and everyone everyone knows everyone knows that knows this story as a hidden awesome moment. <laughs> and I think you know like I'm a pretty positive person I think and I'm a pretty positive optimistic person. So I talk to Boston, feel great and I feel like uh, this is maybe a gift from the coffee god that's telling me you need to compete one more time. You cannot really, you cannot really give up. If you give up, game over. So you need to do one more time. You know, and also, and besides, and you cannot really find a barista who lose just a point five differences, same point, but you lose. And I feel like you know this is a gift from God, and I worked really hard, and then, yeah. I became world Russian champion, briefly. Uh, thank you very much. Very kind. Long time ago, so I'm getting forget about this feeling. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was great because uh, recently, you know, you can see so many Asian competitors beating on the final. It's not really rare anymore. But when the time I competed, it's very rare because it's more like. Unfortunately, it's more like Western-dominated you know, competitions. It, there's no space for Asian people to get in. Uh, but uh, 2040, for me, what I'm really proud of is that I kind of opened up the doors for Asian countries to be competing in the world, world stage and showing them, you know, we can, we can make coffee, we can make tasty coffee, we can present coffee better. Uh, so this is something that I'm really, really proud of. But most importantly, what I learned from my experiences is that, yeah, we never walk alone. Yeah? So sometimes people being very arrogant sometimes because you are champion something, yeah? But for me, you know, World Russia champion doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, because this is just a past experience. So what's really important for our coffee industry is to keep learning as much as you can. This is why I travel 200 days, more than 200 days, even though my wife is not really happy, but I need to because I, need, I, I think I have a duty to be a bridge. I have, I have a duty to deliver, the latest informa to deliver the latest information to the Asian countries and to you know, share those knowledge and then make an make a Asian country even more developing uh, from now on. And I think, you know, the, one of the things, the one of the beauty of competition is all about the uh, to share the experiences and uh, to share the emotions and everything. So this is my experiences briefly up until WBC. So later on, and then you have a sessions. I think you.